welcome back to the channel guys um last video got a ton of views uh if you guys are new here please hit the subscribe button we're almost to our goal of 1000 and uh gonna keep pumping out content things are gonna get interesting this spring today's video is gonna be short and sweet um just in the yard here don't have my seatbelt on so don't freak out but uh i'm gonna go around and i gotta check some driveway approaches to uh getting some hay out of the fields but I'll show you this quick first. We are experimenting with uh, feeding uh, alfalfa baleage in front of the head lockups or the feed bar. Um, it's a lot of work, but uh, it's feeding out nice and uh, it's higher protein. So we got everybody locked up for the spring because this stuff's gonna start getting muddy these yards and uh, it's easier feeding on concrete. Just driving down by the cows here before I head out. Uh, it's about quarter after two in the afternoon. Uh, feed at about 10. And there is no silage left to speak of. A little bit of crumbs to uh, sweep up. But the cows are doing phenomenal on the silage. Uh, feeding just shy of three buckets. Two and, two and three quarter buckets. Skid loader buckets a day. And uh, we got about, I think, think 15 ton 12 15 ton left so it's going good uh, we should be should be close to the end of the month and we'll be out of silage and then uh, cows will be on alfalfa baleage and alfalfa dry hay from then on but uh, still about a month and a half away from cabin so the other night I was in another youtubers live stream and uh, we were all having a good time and the conversation of teff versus alfalfa got brought up. Uh, the biggest reason why you'd go teff over alfalfa is uh, if you're looking for a quick rotational crop, uh, a lot of my teff acres are uh, to break up corn on corn. So I'll run corn on corn for three to four years and then throw a year of teff in and then uh, back to corn. Uh, right now I don't grow soybeans. So basically in my operation, it's taken the place of a soybean crop. So basically uh, alfalfa is more of a long-term rotation. Uh, when I put a seed alfalfa down, I want for five to six years, depending on how, how it goes. So I can't tie up that many acres in alfalfa and take away from my corn acres. And on top of that, um, we're currently hovering right under 200 acres of, uh, of alfalfa acres. And I don't really want to get much over that. Alfalfa is a good sell. Uh, it's somewhat more difficult to sell, but uh, you can get a premium for it. Uh, the easiest stuff for us to sell, because we sell to a ton of horse customers, is grass or grass with light alfalfa. So believe it or not, our uh, grass hay is actually more money than our alfalfa hay. Um, nine out of 10 years, that's not always the case. but. Uh, so yeah, alfalfa will ton out better. It fixes nitrogen and it's a lot harder to put alfalfa on rented acres. So um, like I said, they both have their benefits. I'm not saying to grow teff or to grow alfalfa. It just, it fits into our rotation as if it was a bean crop on our corn on corn acres. And uh, it tons out really nice. And uh, the reason why I would use that warm season annual versus other warm season annuals is uh because like i said we're in the horse market uh we can get a premium for teff grass it makes very very nice hay and uh like you got your sorghum sedans and stuff like that you can't market that to the horse industry and uh that's how that's how our business is ran is catering to the horse people so we got to make uh quality and hay and we want we want quantity too so we really push our tonnages gotta show you guys this really quick uh we went to uh Grand Rapids snowmobile on last week. And I was hoping to make a video because you guys would have thought it was awesome. But uh, I brought the camera and I didn't even pull it out once. Uh, we're just out there having fun. So I didn't want to take from that. Um, maybe if we go on another trip, I'll try and take the camera out. But anyways, it got ended up getting really warm and uh, we got an inch of rain. So everything a solid skating rink if you can see this between buildings there's about three inches of ice so everybody thinks winter is done but uh 
we do have quite a bit of snow in the forecast with cool temps so i believe uh winter is going to come back here for a couple more weeks yet at least uh 90 percent of the gravel roads melted off as you can see up ahead there are icy patches yet but uh i think we topped down dang near 50 degrees for four or five days like i said just about an inch of rain i do have a question for you guys uh watching um starting to pick up a little bit of tiled ground pattern tiled and uh, thinking about actually pattern tiling some of my own acres and i've been told to uh not grow uh hay crops on pattern tiled ground alfalfa or grass or anything because the roots will hunt down to the the drain tile and actually plug it up because it attracts from where the water's running so if any of you guys have experience with growing hay crops and uh, tiled ground let me know um, definitely going to do some more research before i do it because that would sure suck to uh, wreck a bunch of tile by putting hay and grass or alfalfa or grass in it so we're rolling up on this one meadow we have uh, to clean off yet i believe there's 60 bales left out there or so but uh, I'll show you what we're dealing with. The snow ain't so bad out in the fields. Um, I believe there's a, about 18 inch base. Um, it is rock hard though. But uh, what's happening here are these driveway approaches are banked up and they are rock hard. I mean, I can walk on that and uh, two to three foot snow banks. So what we're gonna have to do is uh, come down with the skid loader and uh, push out all the approaches so we can get in there with the tractor and wagons and uh, start collecting bales. We aren't sitting horrible. I believe we got around 160, 180 uh, canary bales out in the field yet, the meadow bales. And then uh, 100 or so 120 cornstalk bales and uh, like, I don't know, 30, 40 grass bales. So it's, uh, it'll be a couple days of hauling. Um, the biggest thing is now that we got this rain, what happens is the bales uh, are sitting on the ground and the snow melts around them. The rain fills in the, the snow, the fills in around the bales and then it uh, freezes and the bales are froze down and then uh, when you go to pick them you end up with busted net wrap so if they start busting we will wait until it warms up again neighbor is getting litter delivered I uh, actually was just thinking about that this morning I got to get prices on uh, lime and litter and uh, see what acres we're gonna cover yet this spring so I would assume Litter is still probably pretty high. Um, fertilizer prices are actually coming down quite a bit. Uh, most cases, 150 to 200 bucks a ton lower than they were last year. So that's the right direction. But uh, something had to go up. So seed prices are up, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks a bag. Still excited for uh, this growing season. Excited to take you guys along, and uh, as always, going to be a wild ride. So we'll see what happens. On a side note, snowmobile trails look beautiful. They uh, froze hard flat. So uh, now, if we can just get a couple inches of fluff on top for some lube, um, I think uh, we'll be back into the nine out of ten snowmobiling conditions. It's been one heck of a year, and I hope it continues for a couple more weeks. So as of last weekend, I got just over 1,200 miles on the sled. So hopefully break 15, 1,600, and uh, back at farming. So with that being said, I'd like to uh, thank every one of you guys for uh, taking a ride with me, checking out the field approaches, and uh, just a quick update on the cattle. I would also like to once again thank uh, each and every one of you new guys or new people watching the channel um, I'd please just really like to encourage you guys to uh, like comment subscribe and uh, let us know what you want to see in future videos um, 
We are first generation farm and uh, we're willing to show you or help you with just about anything. So uh, let us know what you want to see and uh, calving season will be here before we know it. We're going to be busy so uh, feel free to uh, follow along. As always, we'll talk to you later.